Greetings! Today we're going to Alabama. We're gonna see some waterfalls, some of them quite impressive, some not so much. Then back to Georgia and beautiful James Floyd State Park. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Yeah. Now we've got a four hour drive towards the mountains. As we cross the Chattahoochee River, we are now in Sweet Home, Alabama, the Yellowhammer State. And today the idea is to drive north towards higher elevations and hopefully cooler climates. And we've crossed back into Georgia. We're gonna be almost straddling that state line and both eastern and central time zones pretty much all day long. Hmm, not a bad looking town, Lagrange here. Seems pretty lively. Huge cemetery. Eventually, we cross back into Alabama and soon we start seeing some low mountains starting to peak over the horizon. If something has improved in the post-COVID era is the checking process. They already gave me a call, told me the PIN number to get into the campground, my site number. I still have to go by the office later, but it is a much more streamlined process. Well, yeah, today we're making burgers. I'm starving. Cheeseburgers, to be exact. Be good. And there's the final product. A little bit of pico de gallo. All right, we're gonna go to the Soto Falls real quick. It's like a 15-minute drive, and they gave me a, a free pass here, so... Yeah, let's do that. Let's do it. By the way, nice campground here. Everybody's so nice. You know, they've got that southern hospitality thing going on. Well, this is always fun to watch. Huh? Good job! It's a huge campground, by the way. This is just one of the loops, but there's like a pull-through loop here to the right. Turn it's left. Uh... Oh, we're in Mentone. I drove through here in late 2018. It was the first trip with the Colorado, actually. Here we are, the Soto Falls. This is one of those places where I didn't do much research. Apparently there is a longer trail you can do, but today we're just going to see the falls from up here. And this is like a dam, actually. Let's go down these stairs, and here it is. The Soto Falls. Pretty impressive. Hey, check it out. Apparently, there is a trail that goes down there, all the way down there, and you can swim in the water. I bet you it's cold. I really wish they would let me fly the drone, but Georgia State Parks, they really frown upon unmanned aircraft. Maybe one of these days I'll try and get a permit. It is not the most spectacular waterfall I've ever seen, and this is a dam, but it is so pleasant and relaxing here. And that's all for today. Tomorrow we'll continue exploring. This must be the parking lot for the swimming area, I'm assuming here.
Today we're going for a little hike. There's a boardwalk. There's a couple of waterfalls. It's supposed to be it's supposed to be nice. By the way, good morning. It's a kind of late morning here. Well, not really, because we are in Central Time, so it's 8:42 in the morning. Well, here we are. This is the the boardwalk trail. Boom! Let's do it. The boardwalk trail branches out into a few of these other trails. And I might actually try some of them later. Very nice, very pleasant. And they have like these gazebos and, you know, forks on the road once in a while, you know, like, let's see what this is. Okay, I guess this is just a picnic area with a trash can, you know, it's right next to this creek here. Hello there. Where are you? There you are. Come on, don't be shy. Did I startle you? There are several of you. Go well, there, guys, don't be shy. Hmm, do you have an itch? That was really cool seeing those deer. Is this Azalea Cascade? They gotta be kidding me. Okay, from here on, it should be about a mile to Lost Falls. And I believe this is the trail. She said not too strenuous. This part seems uh, pretty strenuous. There we go. Blue Blaze, we're on the right track. Just another walk in the woods. Huh? Well, so far, very well marked. The blazes are everywhere. And freshly painted, it seems. I wonder what this number six means. Let me look at my map. Okay, I almost went in the wrong direction. That, that bridge is just a, a red trail that, that pretty much loops around into the orange trail. It's like a, it merges both trails in a sense. But the blue blazes go that way, so I have to keep on going up. Good thing I have this map. <laughs> it's not the greatest map, but it works. The good thing about this trail being mostly uphill for so far is that that means that the return trail will be downhill, right? One can only hope. All these big boulders here on the side of the trail. Limestone, I presume. It's very pretty. We're about halfway there. My least favorite part so far is there are more than like a few spider webs. So uh, sometimes, you know, you don't see them until you bump into them. <laughs> mm -hmm. I hear water. I hear water in the distance. Is this it? <laughs> Lost Falls, and I think they lost all the water. Are we in a drought or something? This is one of those occasions where it is more the journey than the destination, I think. Here we got them, Lost Falls. Well, yeah, walked a whole mile to see this.
Okay, folks, I tried. This is as good as it gets. This is the orange trail. Let me tell you something. Some trails I've been on are barely marked. You see a blaze every hundred feet or more even. In this one, I think they went a little overboard. Or maybe they were just bored. In any case, they really don't want you to get lost. Let's see what it says here. Actually, I kind of like this trail better. I like him like this, more wide open. I, I don't always feel comfortable like deep in the woods. But this trail is a little wetter, for sure. So I have to be careful not to, not to slip and fall on some of these uh, slippery rocks. Okay, here's a fork on the road. Okay, that one goes to the campground. So I, you know, I could have walked from the campground here. Oh well. Although I think they should have a different color because having both trails orange could be confusing. Yeah, Laurel Falls should be coming up soon here. There you are. Is that a deer? Yes, it is. I wonder what this is. Well, the trail keeps going that way, but this is the spot where Laurel Falls should have been, I think, according to the map. This must be, this has to be Laurel Falls. Well, that's it. Apparently that's the second waterfall. Uh, Laurel Falls here. Uh, maybe I'll do like a slow-mo so it looks bigger. Right, that's it. Let's go back to the trailhead and uh, let's see what else we can do in the area. Even though the falls may have been a little disappointing, it is still a beautiful walk in the woods. Must be getting close to to the boardwalk area. Oh, seven. My map doesn't have numbers, so I have no idea what the numbers mean. Oh, I see. This is one of those red trails that you know goes back. Let's take it. Let's take it real quick. Honestly, I think we're lost. What the heck happened to the other red trail? Remember this little bridge? We're back on the orange trail. By the way, for the record, I like the orange trail a lot better than the blue trail. And the red trails are cool because they connect both. Uh, there's a fallen tree here, which is blocking the red trail to Needle Eye Rock. Hmm, maybe I can go around. So these are supposed to be really cool. Yeah, I guess I could go through here. If it started raining, this would be a good place for shelter. That's for sure. Oh, someone lost a shoe. Sandal. Yes, this is it. This would be the number nine point of interest. I just realized we are back by the visitor center where they have that canopy walk. I think they also have like a zip line. I saw them when I was checking in yesterday. So we've come full circle. See, they have this 
wooden structures here. I don't know exactly what they are. You see, that's that grotto that we saw. We saw it from the other side, which is the red trail over there. Is it? No, this is a different one. You know what this would make? This would make a great cliff dwelling, like, you know. And we've made it back to the boardwalk. Bingo, bingo, boom, chakalaka. I'm telling you, a couple of days more here, I could apply for, for a park ranger job or something like that. All right, this was fun. It took us an hour and 49 minutes. We walked about two hours, I mean, two miles, 2.77 miles. We still have a little bit to go here. And then we're going back to Menitini. I am drenched in sweat, by the way. I don't know if it's, it's kind of warm, but it's, it's not as warm. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm drinking too much water. We made it. Let's get back. I have to take care of that muffler noise at some point. Come check it out, they're doing the, they're doing the zip line thing. Looks like my neighbors are living. Yep, it's hitching up. Well, took a break, made some nice burgers. I didn't take video, but I took a picture. I'll put it here. And uh, right now we're on a mission. Number one, let's find some internet because I have a video to upload. And uh, I mean, I have until Sunday, but I'd rather upload it today, get the captions done and all that. And if I have to drive to Chattanooga, I'll drive to Chattanooga uh, to, to get that upload going. First, let's try Mentone because it is the closest town and it looks like there's a pretty nice view up ahead. And here we are, Mentone. It's supposed to be a pretty cool town with lots of places to eat and there is cell phone signal, what we came for, but not enough throughput for a 10 gigabyte upload. I do have a cell phone tower locator app, so let's put it to good use. Well, the AT&T tower seems to be in Valley Head, so I'm gonna go there. It varies from place to place, but AT&T seems to have the best coverage in this area. Going to Chattanooga. I figured in a big city there has to be good internet, right? That's my, my last choice, my, my only choice. This is my dilemma. As a content creator, sometimes there's decent internet for social, even to watch a video. But in most of these places away from big cities, the big problem has been the upload speed, which happens to be the one that I need. And there has been nothing, virtually non-existent out here. The drive to Chattanooga is less than an hour and I'm not complaining, it is a beautiful drive. Arriving in Chattanooga, that's the Tennessee River right there. Let's see if we can find a good spot. And downtown areas are usually good because there's a lot of coverage. But can also be bad because there are many people and the towers can get congested. Let's try our luck here. Well, that was no good. Five bars of LTE but virtually no bandwidth. Let's keep looking and in the process we can tour the city. Tell you what, I'm gonna go to the area by Coolidge Park on the north bank of the Tennessee River. It is a more residential neighborhood, kind of gentrified, and I think we'll have better luck. Let's give it a try right here. And uh, success! Sort of. Alright, update. Uh, 32 minutes left on the upload and it's at 82% and I have to drive an hour back. I should be able to finish uploading on the way back. I-24 and I-59 here have definitely got to be among some of the most picturesque interstate drives in the country. Our friend Joe recommended this place in Mentone called Wildflower Cafe. But during Covid, they only have like outside sitting and limited hours. So we're gonna have to come back some other time. It is supposed to be this like really quirky place with like a bohemian atmosphere. It's supposed to be really cool. 
Let's explore the Little River Canyon here. And here's an overlook from where you can see the Little River Falls. Let's check it out. This is actually probably the second best waterfall we've seen in the whole trip. Here's a slightly better view. I'm just gonna drive on the Rim Parkway here and look at some of the vista points. Oh yeah, that's another commanding view. I know, this afternoon has been kind of discombobulated. I think the trip to Chattanooga kind of ruined the mood. Well, tomorrow. Tomorrow will be another day. And also tomorrow we're going someplace else. Well, good night. Well, I just realized I'm about to leave and, uh, and I never quite showed you this campsite here at uh, the Soto State Park. This is the, my neighbors, they had a buddy site there. They left yesterday. And uh, this is very nice, especially with this beautiful weather today. And like here it's, uh, there is like a, like, a, like a fire ring. So this whole area, it's really mine, I suppose up until then and then here we are we have full hookups by the way I'm doing my my gray dump right now and we are about to go oh hello there hey you are alive I thought you were a plant would you please thank you very much I don't want to take you to my next destination the Soto State Park here this is site 18 my only complaint about Site 18 here, not a whole lot of privacy with the buddy site right next door there. But other than that, this was a, this was a pleasant stay. Whoa! On the road again. And today we've only got like a 45 minute drive. Should go quickly. And I'm kind of timing it. Uh, 800 feet, oh, turn oh. left toward the Soto Parkway. I'm supposed to, to deposit my... Supposed to leave this at the exit. Um, where was I? Well, as I was saying, uh, the uh, uh, check-in time is not until 1 p.m. and it's 11 here, 11:45, 11 uh, almost 11. But uh, my destination is in the Eastern time zone, so I lose an hour. So ooh, I almost hit that. Um, Head north. So we should arrive right before 1 p.m. and uh, and if, in if my feet, turn left. And if my site is ready, I'll just uh, check in. Usually, and this is not something I do uh, all the time, but usually if you arrive a little early and the site is, uh, you know, the, there's no one there, they, they'll let you check in. At least that, that's how it works in Florida. I don't know. I don't know, Alabama. But very nice. This has almost the feel of an RV resort because, you know, uh, you got you got full hookups and over here on the right, you have all the... I should have... I should have uh, Taking you that way, but it's it's all the the, the pull through sites, and uh, it's supposed to be really nice. In one thousand feet, turn right onto Desoto Parkway. I tell you what, I have a little bit. Of, I have some trash, so let me see if I can stop by the dump station and get rid of my trash. I only have this huge fifth wheel here. Maybe he wants to do the same. Hello. Is gonna do the same. Let's both get rid of our trash. I'm gonna do the same thing. <laughs> Here we go, now we are trashless.
Here we are, James H. Floyd State Park. Only for one night. It was recommended by Brandon Stargell, long-time viewer, and we're gonna spend some time together tomorrow, actually, at Cloudland Canyon, our next destination. Hmm, pretty narrow road, huh? Pelican heads and welcome to another uh, live update. Pelican, the Pelican head update here from the road. I am at James Floyd, Sloppy Floyd uh, State Park here in Georgia, inching my way towards uh, towards Cloud, Cloudland Canyon, and I have a huge sight here. Which, by the way, I'm getting decent uh, Verizon, so that's always a good thing. This place was recommended, by the way, by, by executive producer uh, Brandon Stargell. Um, very nice. Because, you know, I, I mentioned that I wanted to have like a halfway point, you know, have one night that I hadn't decided where to go. I mean, the, my neighbor is right there, but it's pretty private and it's a huge site here. It's pretty big. And, uh, whoop, we have this here to, to hang uh, whatever. We have the, the, the grill. Uh, fire ring and it's a beautiful day here look at that there's not a not a cloud in the sky hey, look at the butterfly fly butterfly yeah, morales site four by reservation only so i made my reservation it's so good so good and that's i'm not even gonna unhitch today i'm just gonna leave it like that i'm perfectly level i found the perfect spot so um, now i'm gonna i'm gonna make a stew and then go out and explore yeah, the cable didn't reach, so I decided to use the Blue Eddy to power the Instant Pot. I gotta get me an extension cord at some point. Here we go, this is even better. Now we have multiple angles, which is awesome. Oh, here's the... Uh -oh. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on saute mode, see if it... See if the Blue Eddy uh, holds that. Uh, let's see, let's see, fingers crossed. Okay, it's holding at 700 watts. It should work, right? It should work. All right, let's see what we have here. All right, I have some beef, I have some mushrooms. This is gonna work fantastically well. And uh, the, the only thing I have to remember to do this before I set up my computers, or I would have to like remove all the computers and the external monitor and all that from here. But other than that, it should work great. I'm gonna put a little bit of butter here. Then we're gonna start browning our meat. There's an onion, a potato. Well, the potato comes later. An onion, garlic, and some green peppers that I have there. Still a little bit frozen, huh? Just realize that still a bit frozen. I'm just gonna. Browning like really great on all sides because it was because it was a little frozen to begin with. I'm gonna put the, the onions and the, and the and the and the bell peppers, and then at the end I'm gonna add the, the garlic. Yeah, I'm definitely much more used to it, uh, the larger uh, instant pots. We're going to start adding some of our signature ingredients, mainly oregano. We don't have, yeah, we have uh, a lot of oregano. I like, uh, I like the flavor that oregano will give to these dishes. Oh, smell it. I wish you could smell that. A little bit of cumin. Always add a little bit less cumin than oregano. And then we got some paprika. I'm going to add a lot of paprika. 
And something else that I'm going to add. Now this is something that I do, so this salsa, it expired like two days ago. It's still perfectly cool. It also, it's not salsa, it's pico de gallo fresh salsa. I don't know if you can see it, let me see. It's basically just chopped tomatoes, onions, and, uh, and it gives it a great flavor. I think it has cilantro to play with. Do I have cilantro? I should add a little cilantro. I'll add the cilantro at the end. I'm also gonna add a little bit of tomato paste. Just a tiny little bit there. Let's move it around, move it around a little bit. In Cuban, you would say a tapas mao. It's like, you know, it's not, it's, it's like not warming enough. I don't know if it is because it is uh, working with the with the blue area. Maybe it's not getting all the amps it should, but it's not, you know, it's not, it's not sauteing like, like it should, right? I don't know if I should add the mushrooms now or after. What do you guys think? Ah, let's add them now. As you can see, we're running out of room here. Let's add the IPA. And I'm gonna add one of these Grand Canyon uh, IPAs. And I think that's all the, oh. Hold on, where's the mark? There's a mark somewhere that you're not supposed to exceed. I think I may have exceeded it. Oh, right there. Okay, we're perfect there. Oh, you know what I'm gonna add? Let's add a little bit of suridasha. You know, for extra flavor. That's it, we're gonna... Uh, and now we're gonna cancel, I'm gonna do uh, minutes two. Now let's do 35. 35 minutes on high, high pressure. Uh, so I'll get back to you. When it's done. Let's give it the taste test. Now that we've made a little room, let's add the potato and the carrots and the celery. I almost forgot the manzanilla olives. Now we wait. Final product. All right, let's go for a little hike. It's getting cloudy for some reason. Very nice, very, very quiet. Oh, this, this must be Easiest. This must be, yeah, lake trail. It says it right there. Let's do the lake trail. You could hear a pin drop. Interesting. No cicadas. No noise making insects. There, there's, a, there's, there's a couple of spider webs. That's the only thing. Beautiful, so green, everything. It's beautiful. There's the lake, lower lake. This is the lower lake, as I said. And now we're gonna start making our way towards upper lake. And if you guessed waterfalls, you would be correct. Let's just hope these have some water. This here is Upper Lake. Beautiful. Oh, wow. <laughs> there was a fish. Did you, did you hear that? Anyways, uh, from the other side of the lake, it should be a, one po a 0 0.8 mile trail to the mine. I guess they, they rent this uh, these little pontoon boats. Forget it, they're, they're paddle boats. I don't know. <laughs> I don't feel like doing that much exercise. But this is beautiful. Look, take a look at this, this place. This, take a look at this place. Oh, look at the dock. The 
It's a gorgeous lake, I had no idea. Very nice, and fishing is supposed to be really good from here, so one of these days I'm gonna, I'm gonna take up fishing for once and for all. Trailhead should be somewhere by the end of this cove here. You know which way to the trail? You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Hey. It's called the Marble Mine Trail. I don't know, I'll do as much as I feel comfortable doing. I'm a little low energy today, especially after that meal. <laughs> Lake Rim Trail or Marble Mine? Okay, Marble Mine 0.8 miles, and according to this I've done 0.38 since I, <laughs> since the time I remember to turn it on, so. Uh, Maybe I should reset it. Yeah, let me reset it, just so I know. There we go, zero. And that way in my mind, I know where I'm, when I'm getting there. Just another walk in the woods. Yeah, I got a phone call during the hike. You're not gonna believe who it is. Hello, good for me. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that was this traveler on the phone. Okay, maybe I should pay attention to the, to the signs. Marble mine, that way. And that's, oh, a picnic area down there. All right. Privy. What is a privy? You know the waterfall is supposed to be like a tiny little trickle, right? I'm doing this more really for, for the exercise. And you know, it's, a, it's healthy, you know, breathe the, the, the pure forest air. I hear water. We must be close. Oh, 1.67 miles, so yeah, that should be it. I can hear it, but I can't really see it. Oh, there it is. That's it. All right, we saw what we came to see. Now let's head back. Well, this park here, what a great discovery. Beautiful and totally under the radar. So thank you, Brandon, for pointing it out. Great suggestion. And that's all we're gonna do today. Tomorrow we continue the journey north towards Cloudland Canyon State Park, near the northwestern corner of the Peach State. But more about that on the next episode.
I'm writing, writing it. 